While taking a look at the DPS rankings from Nomorgan, the fate of the Range Hunter looks dire. With Range Hunter barely beating the worst DPS in the game, and with the Melee Hunter being one of the top performing specs, it doesn't seem to be much value in ever using a bow and arrow to pump. But I'm not sure I totally agree just yet that it's a dead spec. Here's the thing. With Melee Hunter being as strong as it is right now, pretty much every single person looking to push the limit will be playing that spec right now. And as such, the ranks of the Range Hunter is filled with proper dad gamers and people who, God forbid, play the game for fun. But I'm here to change that. Here's how to optimize your damage as a Range Hunter. There are a few builds we can run right now and all are viable in their own right, meaning that you will have no trouble clearing Nomergan with any of these builds. That said, one of them is a clear outlier right now, and the build that I suspect will be dominating the Range Hunter parses if more people start playing it. Let's start with that build, and it's the Dance build. The Dance build is the ultimate weaving build. We take what makes Melee Hunter so good and add it to our rotation. We go 31 points deep into marksmanship, picking up True Shot Aura and skipping increased range, because with this build, we'll never really be in a position where the extra range will be utilized. We pick up Chimera Shot on Gloves, Harv Lion on Chest if the buff is not already provided for, otherwise we go Lone Wolf, Flanking Strike on Legs, Melee Specialist on Waist, and Dual Wheel Specialization on Feet. With this build, you'll be dropping your two-hander in favor of two one-handers. And despite it being a stat loss for most people, we'll want to run Protector Sword in the main hand and Vanquisher Sword in the offhand, even over the Nomergan Polarm or Two-Handed Sword. This build will fill the time between each shot with melee attacks, but we'll go more into that during the rotation portion. The second build is the Beast Mastery build. Currently, this setup with 31 points into BM that picks up Beast Mastery on gloves, Hard Lion on chest, Flanking Strike on legs, Melee Specialist on waist, and Trap Launcher on feet is the spec that's rank 1 during week 2 of Normagon. Just like the dance build, you'll heavily be relying on weaving in flanking strikes and raptor strikes into your rotation. This build seems to gain the most value from the Wind Serpent, especially if you have a balanced druid or enhanced shaman in your raid. The major drawback of this build, however, is that you don't provide True Shot Aura. The benefit from this buff alone is much greater than people think. 50 extra attack power provides about a 20 DPS increase on each member that it affects, and thus, not using it gimps the overall DPS quite hard unless you not taking it gives you an extra 80 DPS. The last build I want to mention is the Sniper build. This is the spec for those who don't enjoy melee weaving, and if you have access to the epic gun, then this build is actually not half bad. It goes 31 points into marksmanship, picks up Chimera Shot on gloves, Lone Wolf on chest, Sniper training on legs, Exposed Weakness on belt, and Trap Launcher on feet. This build makes you do big numbers. Sniper training synergizes nicely with Exposed Weakness, and with Trishot Aura, you get about 150 extra attack power for free. Not many fights are going to allow you to have 100% uptime on sniper training, but proper pre-planning will allow you to have a very high uptime. It loses value if you're forced to go Heart of the Lion instead of Lone Wolf, so make sure to drag along another Hunter. For the dance build, you want to start the fight with Aim Shot, Serpent Sting, Auto Shot, Chimera Shot, Auto Shot, Multi Shot, and then the Weaving commences. Between every shot, go into melee, use flanking strike or raptor strike, and then every time you leave melee, use auto shot and either chimera shot or multi shot, depending on what's off cooldown. For the BM build, our rotation looks the same, but we drop chimera shot and aim shot and incorporate immolation trap for single target or explosive trap for AoE. For this build, flanking strike becomes more of a priority than raptor strike and should be used whenever it's off cooldown. For the range build, we open with aim shot. Serpent Sting, Chimera Shot, Multi Shot, and then it becomes a priority system of using Chimera Shot over Multi Shot over Aim Shot. Make sure to start casting Aim Shot right after an auto attack to avoid it clipping too much. Weave in Immolation Trap whenever it's about to fall off and everything else is on cooldown. This is a rather low value spell and should not be prioritized. Running a 2.0 attack speed cat due to our increased usage of flanking strike with rank 6 bite, rank 6 claw, and rank 2 dash will be your best bet. For the beast mastery build, wind serpents seem to offer the most value. 
we will still have the same spell rank as from phase 1, so just go out and level the pet that's already sitting in your stable. Going over each individual gear piece is beyond the scope of this video, but here are some noteworthy items as we get ready to jump in a Nomer. If you're running the dance build, make sure to grab your pre bit sword from the Warsong Gulch vendor. Pair it with the Vanquish sword from the RFD quest, which you can pick up from Stormwind or Undercity. When you're down with the vendor in Ashenvale, pick up the level 38 neck and ring as well as the level 28 ring until you can get your Iron Spine's eye from SM Graveyard. Then head down to Feralus and farm the Distress Beacon for the Chicken Escort. The Shoulder Quest reward are your pre-read best in slot if you're mellow weaving. While we're at it, another best quest reward can be picked up from the Tremors of the Earth questline in Badlands, which gives a 23 agility and 3 stern chest. Running the crafted green gun or the silencer will be your best bet until you get a weapon from Nomer. Of course, having the bow of searing arrows would be nice, despite the proc being utter garbage, but the costs cannot be justified at the moment. You'll want to be leatherworking for the helmet and engineering for the belt. Keep in mind that if you're running a pure range build, you don't benefit from strength and should thus make gearing choices that reflect that. Getting minor run speed on boots is also vital if you're melee weaving. We'll want to keep quite a few consumables on hand. The ones that increase our damage are Dragon Breath Chili, Sagefish Delight, Elixir of Agility, Elixir of Ogre Strength, Oil of Emulation, and Solid Sharpening Stone on the offhand if you're running the dance build, as well as the main hand or your two-hander if you do not have a Feral Druid in your group. I think the Range Hunter is much more viable than we give it credit for. And as Blizzard has been rather generous on buffing specs that aren't doing too hot, I would not be surprised if a Range Hunter will see tuning in the future. And to be frank, even without it, Range Hunter can still be competing for the DPS rankings towards the top of the meters. There's still a lot that I'm trying to figure out and optimize, like the value of flanking strike in the dance build and much more. So if you'd like to follow along the journey towards finding the best and most optimal Hunter build, make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.